Hi everyone, I'm Lisa and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. There's a promotion going on right now with Stampin' Up! called the Color Your Season Promotion. There's a stamp set called Blended Season and it offers coordinating framelits and a brand new collection of watercolor pencils that I use to create today's card. Quite easy and I'm going to give you lots of tips along the way. Remember, you're going to be able to find pictures, cutting dimensions, and supplies down in the description of this video below. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started on today's project. Here's a good close-up of the card we're going to be creating today. Lots of details, but quite simple to put together. I'm starting with a base of Whisper White cardstock that I'm going to go ahead and fold in half. This is where we're going to place that designer series paper that's going to be in the overlay for the top. And I'm going to use my bone folder for a nice crisp crease on that card and I'm going to set that aside for just now. Just ahead of the video, I've gone ahead and I've pre-cut some designer series paper. This is from the Garden Impressions Designer Series Paper Stack. And like almost all of the Stampin' Up! Designer Series papers, they are double-sided, giving you lots of options within the same package. Now, we do offer some foil papers that are not double-sided, and that's simply because of the metallics, and those are noted in the annual catalog. If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you are interested in and a complimentary copy of the annual catalog, I would be more than happy to send you one. Just leave me a comment below. I'm going to place adhesive on the back of the one that has the crushed curry colored accents on it. I've created these to have a very small margin of color all the way around, so it's just going to leave a slight border of the blue. I've also cut about a 5 eighths inch piece of designer series paper that I'm going to adhere across the center of these layers. And you're going to notice that it's a lot longer than it needs to be because I want to give you a tip about trimming. To ensure that I don't get adhesive on my work surface, I'm a big fan of the silicone craft sheet. By using this instead of using the paper underneath, if any adhesive falls on here, it will not stick to it. It simply rubs off because of the silicone surface. So I really like to use this when I'm using small narrow pieces pieces or small cutout pieces of cardstock or designer series paper. So I'm just going to kind of look and center this the very best that I can right across the middle. And then what I'm going to do is press it in place and I'm going to actually use the edges of this as a guide to give this a trim. So I'm going to flip this over and from the back side I'm going to go ahead and use a pair of scissors to trim away the excess. The great thing about this is that this straight edge is going to ensure that my paper down the center is going to be straight across the edges here so that's not a little bit too short. I've cut a piece of the Whisper White polka dot tool. This is just so pretty. You really can't appreciate it in the video. But the polka dots on here are like a raised felt finish and it's really quite elegant. I'm going to wrap this right over that strip of designer series paper. And the easiest way to adhere this for me is with glue dots. So I'm going to go ahead and peel back one. I'm going to place one glue dot here. And then I'm going to actually wrap this around the back side of my card. I'm going to put the raw ends to the back. There's really no reason for me to cut it and go all the way around the card. That's just extra that I have to waste. I'm going to place another one on this side as well. So I'm just going to press and lift, just making sure that it's lined up across that designer series paper. And then I'll press that in place. I find too that the tool really has some give to it, which really makes it easy to work with. The Color Your Season promotion includes a beautiful stamp set. There's a large variation of images to take you from all occasion cards clear through the holidays as well as the varied greetings. Now the stamp set can be purchased separately or you can choose to purchase it as a bundle. It has coordinating framelits. The one thing I love about these framelits is not only do they coordinate, but they provide some extra pieces in here that are not part of the stamp set, such as these stitched, beautiful, layered labels that we're going to be using today. Also part of the promotion is a brand new 10 pack of watercolor pencils that we're going to be using on the card as well. So you'll get a good look at the products that are part of the Color Your Season promotion. I'm choosing to use the middle size framelit that's inside this package and I've got a scrap piece of Whisper White cardstock here and I'm going to die cut this frame. I've got my magnetic platform here, which is my platform of choice when I'm using framelits. That magnetic surface really helps to hold them in place and to protect it, I'm going to use one of the clear cutting mats on top of it. And then I'll place my cardstock and I'm going to place that die. 
and then I'm going to put another clear mat over the top to protect that framelit, and then I'm going to crank this through. The one reason I am in love with these framelits is because they provide a beautiful stitched frame all the way around. So I'm just going to disassemble this, and then out it comes, and then you're going to see that beautiful stitched frame that's all the way around this label. Now once we have that piece die cut, I'm going to do a little bit of stamping. I've already mounted the flower from that stamp set. You're going to see how large it is. So I choose to place it face up on my work surface. I find that a lot easier for me to ink than trying to manipulate it this way and then risk missing a spot. I'm going to use Memento ink for this step. This is a water-based ink pad. So I'm going to go ahead and ink that up here. This is not good for water coloring. So I'm going to change ink pads once we get over to the detail portion of this flower. And then I'm going to concentrate on just a little bit of that image off in the corner. But I know that I want to get that flower inside this frame. So I'm just going to kind of work here and then I'm going to press. I'm going to be very careful to make sure that I'm tracing out that image because it is quite detailed. I'm now switching over to a piece of watercolor paper. This time, I know that I'm going to color one of the flowers in, so I'm going to have to switch over to the Stazon ink. This ink is a permanent solvent-based ink, which will assure that when I add some water to this, that it's not going to bleed. So just like I did before, I'm going to use the stamp face up, and I'm going to concentrate on that one flower that I'm going to actually use as a focal point. And I'm going to stamp that here on the watercolor paper. Watercolor paper has an entirely different type of texture than regular Whisper White cardstock. So you're going to need to make sure that you trace it out very well. Stampin' Up! has a pack of 13 watercolor pencils that are in the annual catalog already. And I've gone ahead and I've pulled out the Daffodil and the Pacific Point for my flower here. And from the brand new pack of 10 watercolor pencils, which are available only in August during this promotion, I have pulled out the beautiful Knight of Navy pencil. So I'm going to use these three colors to create some tones in this flower. I'm going to start with the yellow in the center. And just like you would any other colored pencil, you're just going to go ahead and color it in. Now, if you're not a fan of blending, you don't have to. That's the great thing about this product. So I'm going to go ahead and add some color here. And you're going to want to have a pencil that doesn't have a lot of sharp points on it. You're going to find that a pointed pencil is going to be very difficult to blend. So you want your pencil to have kind of a rounded tip on it. If necessary, take it on your scratch paper and rub it and roll it to make sure that you don't have those hard lines that are going to be difficult to blend. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to color this in just as if I was coloring in any other image. It's, it's not important to color the whole thing solid because we're going to use the aqua painter to help spread some of that color. If you don't want to color it in, just take your time and you'll end up with a beautifully colored image using it just as a colored pencil. That's the great thing I love about this product is you've got a lot of flexibility in how you want to use them. Now this is the Knight of Navy from that new pack and I'm going to add this here to the center. I'm going to make this just a little bit darker so you can see that this is going to give a little bit of depth here to the center. The great thing about these stamps is you're going to see that there are definition lines inside the petals. They're going to give you a hint on where to place more color. So I'm satisfied with that. I'm going to pick up my aqua painter. I always like to give my aqua painter a little bit of a pinch because I want to make sure that it's not so soaking wet that I can't control the flow of the water. All I'm going to do is spread that color around, bringing it from the inside out. It will pick up pigmentation from the watercolor pencil, so it's going to be really important that you clean it off. I'm going to hold this over my stamp and scrub and I'm going to give it a squeeze. And the tap water that's in the barrel is going to run through the bristles. The great thing about this product is not only will you get two aqua painters in a package, but you simply unscrew it and pour tap water down inside. This eliminates the need for a regular paintbrush and a cup of water, so it's a lot neater to use. So I've just cleaned that off camera, just checking to make sure that it's not blue, it looks good, and giving it another pinch. Now I'm going to need to let this sit and dry a little bit in case I want to add more color. And if I do, I can go back over it. Let me show you one other way that you can use the pencils. You can pick up the color here right off the pencil with the aqua painter and lay it on the watercolor paper itself. So working backwards. If it's not dark enough, 
let your paper dry and you're going to be able to come back in and add more color. You're going to see that my paper is still slightly wet and you're going to see the intensity of my watercolor pencil really coming out in here now. And again, you can wait for it to dry or you can spread that color out. I went ahead and I cleaned this right off camera and before I put my aqua painter away, I'm really careful to put the bristles together and then I cap it. And the reason I do that is I want those bristles to stay to a nice point so that when I go to use it again, I don't have any stray hair that have gotten caught underneath the cap. This is going to need to sit and dry for a few minutes. If you own a heat tool, you can go ahead and speed up that process by heating up the paper and drying it so that you can go ahead and move on to the next step. My image is dry now, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut it out. As part of the framelits, there is not one to cut out the flower. I know, but you know what? It's really quite simple. I'm going to start by giving you some tips. Cut the paper smaller than what you're going to need. So I'm going to go all the way around here and just cut away the excess to make it easier for me to use. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm just going to follow the lines of the image. But you're going to see that I'm going to leave some of the actual cardstock around the edges. By not cutting on that stamp line, you're going to find that you're not going to distort the image. And it's going to make it a lot easier for you to cut out. From that same stamp set, I've gone ahead and mounted the words that say, I just miss you. And I'm going back to my Memento ink and I'm going to ink up my words and I'm going to stamp them off here to the side on this image. Just cleaned off the stamp off camera and then that scrap piece of cardstock that we used to create this label, I'm going to actually stamp this one more time and this time in the crushed curry. One of the beautiful things about Stampin' Up! products are the color coordination. So this is going to coordinate with the designer series paper just beautifully. So I'm going to go ahead and ink that up. Again, I'm going to cut this a little bit smaller to make it easier for me to work with. And all I'm going to do is the same thing like I did with the flower. I'm just going to come around those letters, leaving a little bit of cardstock showing and just cutting them out. So I'm just kind of turning my paper as I turn my scissors. I'm back here to the base of the card and I'm going to mount this. And I'm going to choose to use dimensionals. I'm going to flip that over. These are double sided pieces of foam tape that are already pre cut. I use them generously because I want to make sure that on the other end, whoever received this, that this card is not going to sag as it goes through the mail meter at the post office. I'm going to remove the paper backing from here. I'm going to mount that here in the center of my card base. Remember that flower? I'm going to go ahead and flip that over. I'm going to add some dimensional pieces here as well. I've got some smaller pieces that I actually had cut up on the paper that will fit very nicely here. While you've got them on the paper, take your scissors, snip them right up the center and that's going to work really well on those smaller areas. And I'll take off the paper backing to these as well. This flower now mimics this flower here. So I'm just going to line it up the best that I can and then mount it over the top as a focal point. No two of your watercolor images are ever going to be identical because each one is colored individually and it has a lot to do with the intensity of how you color and blend. Remember the word you that we cut out? I'm going to use the mini dimensionals for the back of my word you. But even though these are much smaller than these, they're a little bit too big. So I'm going to take my scissors once again, just like I showed you before, and I'm going to cut them in half while they're on this paper. So I'm using my paper piercing tool to help pick them up and I'm going to lay them on the back side. And I'm going to cover up the black text with the crushed curry text to get a dimension there of color and for the card front. I've used a bow maker to create a beautiful multi-loop bow and I'm going to attach that here to my card and I'm going to use glue dots. So I'm going to add a couple to the back because I want to make sure that it's going to hold in place, especially during mailing. And I'm going to move that off here to the side. And I think I'm going to put mine on an angle on this card. And you're going to see that these are a little bit too long, so you can go ahead and trim those. The envelope is slightly bigger than the card itself, so that's going to fit very nicely. And again, like I've said before, no two cards are going to be alike. So this is the one we created today. 
This is the one I created before you join me. Do you see the difference in the blues? But they're both really pretty. These products are all part of the Color Your Season promotion, available only in August 2018. Once they sell out or August 31st comes about, the stamps and the framelits and the new 10-pack of watercolor pencils are not going to be available, so make sure you get yours. It is a fantastic bundle of products that I know you're going to enjoy. Now, I promised you some additional samples. If you're already subscribed to my blog, you will have seen this card that I shared a few weeks ago. Isn't it beautiful? I used two of those nesting frames to create an open area here for the watercolor pencils and these flowers. I also created a small card using the wheat image that's inside this stamp set and a beautiful Christmas card using that single image of the holly. The watercolor pencils make it easy and elegant. And then one more that exact same frame that we've used today and that beautiful glimmer bow that I die cut from the framelits that are here inside this package. You can find pictures, cutting dimensions, and supplies in the description bar below if you're here visiting from YouTube. Thanks so much for joining me, everyone. I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.